No doubt the most influential and personal favorite movie of mine is Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, isn't that the third in the series of movies? Don't you think the original is the best? Now, I loved the first Indiana Jones, and I'm certainly not suggesting that movie is weak in any respect. But personally, for me, I loved The Last Crusade even more. I felt one of the best things about it was the focus being put on the story of the relationship between Indiana and his father, rather than the typical sort of love story in the original. Hit! Are we hit? More or less. John, I'm sorry. They got us. For me, The Last Crusade has always been the perfect combination of fun and good. Serious, but not overtly. Unique in tone, but still familiar. The acting, directing, cinematography, screenplay, and of course, the music. That's why along with the film, the score by longtime Spielberg collaborator John Williams remains a favorite of mine to this day. So let's talk about that and discover what makes this score so special. Six pound gun. What do you think you're doing? Get down! Dad, we're well out of range. <laughs> You lost today, kid. But it doesn't mean you have to like it. From the moment the movie starts, the message is clear. As with all Indiana Jones films, this will take place across a wide variety of continents and locations. Capturing these different cultures in the form of music can be especially challenging. Oftentimes, a composer will incorporate a particular instrument into the mix to represent that culture, or even change the entire melody to fit. One of the first places we are brought to in Indiana's journey is Venice, Italy. On the original score, we are treated to a song called Escape from Venice. In this sequence, we have Indiana Jones being chased by unknown bad guys on a boat through Venice. John Wims already has the goal in mind of creating a typical chase sequence of music. Fast notes, layered instrumentation, synchronized moments to mark things like explosions or gunshots. Notice how he does, however, layer in a mandolin, giving it a little bit more of a typical Italian-style flair. It's not a huge deal, but it is important to keep in mind how many parts of movies are not filmed entirely on location. So if, say, you were filming this in L.A. somewhere, you want to try to do everything you can to keep the film consistent with the intended setting. But after the chase nears the end, something pretty remarkable happens. But after the chase nears the end, something pretty remarkable happens. The music transitions into this wonderful staccato style movement that nearly matches the motion on screen of the propellers as they start to heat up Indiana Jones' boat. Watch how this matches the on screen action. I don't care who you are, that's pretty remarkable. Pretty cool, right? Now, I'm not suggesting most viewers would be consciously aware of it, but I have no doubt, subconsciously at least, that sequence is more thrilling because of it. And once you realize this, you start to notice how often many other movies do this very same thing. There's another part in the last half of the film that works in a very similar manner. It has that sort of um, timing to it. Indiana is fighting a Nazi on a tank, and as that fight progresses, through um, a variety of different uh, situations and, and turns, uh, an impending doom lurks around the corner, the edge of a cliff. And as Indiana is distracted, he doesn't even notice the cliff until at the very last second. And the music just fits that moment perfectly. Take a listen.
Now, as cool as that is, the best part comes right after that, in my opinion. When we discover that Indiana has not died in that crash, and the theme between the father and the son is reprised once again very subtly. I thought I'd lost you, boy. One of the best parts about that, I think, is how quickly that emotional moment wraps up. It, it kind of symbolizes their relationship throughout the movie. Um, and it goes right back into, hey, let's get back into the adventure. And, and notice the hat rolls across the screen as the theme is brought back up. So at the end of the film, there is one more moment that I wanted to talk about. And uh, that in particular is when Indy has finally got the grail in his hands and he brings it out to his father. And, and as they cross the seal, the whole entire place starts collapsing. And uh, Elsa falls to her death as she's trying to reach for the holy grail. And then Indy is um, put in that same situation. Take a listen to how this plays out. Don't, Elsa. Elsa. Your other hand, honey, I can't hold you! I can reach it. I can reach it. Elsa, give me your hand. Give me your other hand! What I really like about that moment um, is even in the actual movie itself is the, the sound effects kind of disappear and all we can hear is his voice and the music and, and that's just magic right there. So we could uh, go on for a long time about this particular movie. Uh, but my goal is to condense these in uh, about 10 minutes or so uh, just to give you some of the highlights of these scores. If you like what you heard uh, and saw, please uh, subscribe to us. Check out our Patreon page. Um, support us if you get a chance. Um, and we'll, we'll be doing more of these films, and, and we just hope that you enjoy the experience. <laughs>